Happy birthday, Mission Church! Happy five years, Mission! Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Mission Church! Church. Happy birthday, Mission Church! You're a whole in now! Happy fifth anniversary, Mission Church! Wow, five years! What a great milestone! The church has truly been a blessing to us. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Mission, Mission Church. Church! Happy anniversary, Mission Church! Can you believe it's been five years? Wow, it's incredible. When I think about Mission Church and what it means to me, number one, it's about the message. It's about hearing God's word in a very relevant and very prudent way. Um, it's about being able to come as you are, wherever you are in your walk of life. Community has been something that has been very important to Mission since day one, and the ability to be able to serve Goodyear, the schools, the community that we live in and we worship in is just unbelievable. But also to be able to take it around the world as well too. It's just been a great thing. So uh, happy anniversary, Mission. I love you. Bye. Hey, Mission Church, happy birthday. Can't believe it's five years. Man, I can remember when God began to lay upon our heart the idea of planting, and then God began to move in my heart and say, you know, Kyle would be the perfect guy to do that. And then it came back. I remember your launch day and the great location the Lord gave you. Now, five years later, and what God is doing and the new place that you guys are going, I tell you, we are so excited about your new spot. Believe God's dropped you right in the heart of Goodyear to do an incredible work for Him. So I wish I could be with you today, celebrating with you, but happy birthday. God bless you. You guys keep on mission. Hello, Mission Church, and welcome to this online presentation. We are so excited to be celebrating our five-year anniversary as a church. It is just mind-blowing to think that in 2016, God brought together a small group of people at Copper Trail School, and we launched uh, what we hope is just a movement of God here in our community in the West Valley. And wow, for four years, we saw God doing amazing things. I mean, life change. We saw people getting baptized. We saw families um, coming together and, and getting saved. We saw uh, so many amazing opportunities to impact our community uh, through our school and, and through other outreach events in our community. God was at work. Every year we were seeing double digit growth in our church. We were seeing uh, new opportunities to connect with families in our growing community here in Goodyear. Uh, in fact, before uh, 2020 came, we were already praying about, God, would you open a, a building space for us? Would you provide a permanent home for Mission Church? We were already talking to some commercial realtors, some developers. We were looking at spaces that might possibly work for our church. We had all the growth and all the momentum and all the excitement of, of seeing what God had been doing, uh, even just reflecting uh, this past week on our four-year anniversary a year ago, all that God had been doing and, and all the excitement of what was to come. But no one could have known what 2020 held. And, and suddenly we got into 2020 and despite all of our best intentions and plans, COVID hit and then everything changed. Suddenly church went online and, and suddenly outreach events were canceled. Uh, so suddenly volunteers were sidelined as we were having church online and, and no longer needing volunteers for setup and teardown and all of those things. Easter took place online for the first time ever that I can remember. We as a church were displaced and kicked out of Copper Trails and not able to meet there anymore. Uh, we, we had a lot of Challenges with volunteer teams being depleted and not ready to come back with COVID and not sure about serving and not sure what was going to happen. We ran into a situation where it almost felt impossible that we would even be able to regather. We were struggling to find a location, struggling to find a place to even record our online services. I mean, all our momentum flew out the window and it was just one of those seasons where, man, I was feeling discouraged. As the pastor and leader of mission, I, I mean, up to that point, God had been doing such amazing and great things. And, and suddenly in 2020, everything seemed to be falling apart. The wheels literally coming off and, and everything falling apart. It seemed like people were, 
you know, distancing themselves from the church, wandering away for whatever different reasons. And, and it seemed like financially things were going down. And there were times during 2020 when I, I know every pastor I talked to was wrestling with things like discouragement and frustration and, and worry and fear for their people and for the church and for what, what would come in the future. And, and I know I spent a lot of 2020 on my knees, literally praying like this with open hands. And saying to God, God, this is your church. This is your ministry. You've built it. You've given it to us. God, this is yours. And we want to honor you in it. And we want to trust you in it and look to you in what we're doing. And I prayed multiple times through that season that God, if, if this is the end, if, if, if that was the season you had for Mission Church and we're supposed to pack it up and do something different, would you lead in, in that? And would you give us wisdom? And for whatever reason, I just continued to feel God saying, hang in there. I have a purpose and a plan for Mission Church. In fact, in, in the midst of COVID, in the midst of all of the difficulty and the struggle that we were experiencing, God was at work. God was doing amazing things, powerful things, big things that, that we couldn't even see behind the scenes on our behalf. And today, as we celebrate our five-year anniversary, I want to share with you eight miracles that God did in 2020 in the life of our church. I, I could probably count more than that, but these are eight significant things that God did where God did things that only God could do. And I want you to hear the story. I want you to be part of this because I want you to know, church, these are not my miracles. These, these are not just miracles for the staff team. These are your miracles. You're a part of this. This is the story God is writing for Mission Church here in the West Valley, and you are a part of that story, and these are your miracles too, and God is gonna grow your faith through hearing this story. So I can't wait to tell you, the first miracle is this, surviving COVID, that's what I called it. I, I mean, so many churches struggled during COVID, and we were just feeling like, wow, God sustained us, even in the midst of all the struggles and challenges, even in the midst of everything going on in a difficult time. We were able to move our services online. We were able to turn on a dime and start producing services. We were able to get into coffee shops and all kinds of crazy locations that let us film in their, in their location so that we could still produce and, and share an online service. We were able to share hope during a time when people were desperately searching. And get this, it wasn't just about survival for mission last year. During COVID, God allowed us to continue to impact the community. I mean, listen to this. This is super cool. We were able to partner with some local coffee shops and businesses to assist us with our outreach events and even use their buildings for recording our services. We were able to participate in the Goodyear Fall Festival, literally touching hundreds of families with just a simple message of hope and love during a hard season. We partnered with West Valley churches all around this area to collect food and snacks and thank you cards to support our frontline workers at the Abrazo West Hospital to be a blessing to those who were battling COVID right on the front lines. We were able to meet needs in our church community and in our broader community with people struggling with finances and groceries and different things throughout COVID. We were still able, even in COVID, to have our annual backpack school supplies drive for Copper Trail School. And man, I was so thrilled because you all stepped up and we had a goal of collecting 100 backpacks full of school supplies. And church, we, kept, we collected more than 170 backpacks full of supplies. And we were able to bless so many families through our church because of what God was doing. Not only that, in our church, God was at work too. We started a brand new internship and we have three interns who are growing in ministry and learning how to share their faith and, and do ministry more effectively. Uh, we were able to, to write and produce a Bible study to go on YouVersion Bible app as a part of our I Am series. And to this point, more than 4,000 people around the world have downloaded and participated in that study with us. And that's mind blowing that a little church in Goodyear, America is impacting people all over the globe. It's amazing. And then at Christmas, we did a toy drive like we do every Christmas and we were partnering with the Harvest Compassion Center. Again, we had a goal of collecting toys to be a blessing to them. 
We collected over 268 toys so that families could have Christmas this year. During COVID, we didn't just survive, we thrived. And that was a miracle of God because I've talked to so many churches and so many places who have struggled. Even though financially we struggled during COVID, even though finances were down probably 20% even in our own church, we continued to support the work of our missionaries in Nicaragua and Japan and local church planning efforts through our association. We were able to continue to pay our staff and didn't have to let anyone go or make any significant staff changes. Our staff did a phenomenal job of pulling back our expenses and, and being able to manage the resources that we had as carefully as possible so that we could continue you know, the work that God had given us. And even though finances were down, God provided just enough for us to stay strong, for us to continue to do ministry and share hope in our community. Miracle number two is this, it's regathering, right? We had been praying, we had been struggling and COVID had dragged on for months and we didn't know what was gonna happen. And, and God eventually opened the door and provided a place for us so that we could gather on Saturday nights in Litchfield Park. And we were so thrilled just to be back in the room together. I remember those first worship services when I literally just wept because of being in the room and having worship experience again. It wasn't our ideal. We weren't on Sundays. We weren't in our community anymore. We had to make significant changes, but God was at work. And one other provision as, as a part of that is our volunteers. So many weren't ready to come back and serve yet, but being at a church and having worship there where we could walk in and, and have a turnkey operation where we could walk in and turn the lights on and have church, saved us so many needed volunteers for setup and teardown and allowed us to continue to have church with a much smaller volunteer team. When we moved in in, in the end of September, I was praying about this and, and just trusting God. I was praying that God would, in the three months to the end of the year, God would open doors and God would allow us to be back in good year, back on Sunday morning, that, that God would just continue to provide. And these were things that we were praying for. We needed to find consistency again coming out of COVID. We needed to regather. And I want to tell you, church, that during that season, those three months at the end of 2020, we looked at dozens of options for us to regather as a church. We looked at the AMC movie theaters and the door was closed. We looked at public schools and high schools. We looked at private schools. We looked at charter schools. We looked at new schools all up and down the I-10, all around Goodyear and Avondale and Litchfield Park and Verado and all these areas. We prayed and, and God just kept closing the doors. We connected with the city of Goodyear. They have a development office for the economic development and they had people looking for us for a location. We reached out to the Goodyear City Council, some of the people that we know and, and, and the relationships that we have and, and we're knocking literally on every door that we could find. We talked to a commercial real estate agent about finding an, an open door, a place for us, maybe an office building that would be empty because of COVID where we could move in and have a space to regather in 2021. We were exhausting every option. Finally, we found this school and we thought this was gonna be the place. We thought maybe we'd be able to come in and even install some permanent audiovisual equipment to make setup and tear down that much easier. And we just continued to pray that God would provide. And we thought there that that was gonna be the option, but God closed the door. And it was frustrating, church. I don't know if you've been in that season where God just closes doors and you wonder, God, what are you doing? But again, I was praying with open hands, Lord, this is your church. It's your ministry. You have to provide. And I trust you. And, and I remember telling our staff, when God closes a door, it's because he has something better for us. We couldn't see it. We couldn't imagine it. We couldn't even begin to put it together. But we just kept having closed doors. And, and we had a deadline looming. Our contract at Epicentro ended at the end of 2020 in December. We were only a few weeks away from literally being homeless again as a church. And we were trying so hard to trust God through that. And I'll never forget, on December 9th, I had a meeting with Pastor Steve at Desert Springs, our sister church. And he's been encouraging and mentoring me through this process as well. And, and I met with him and, I, and we were talking about what our options were. And I was going through the list of all the things that we had tried 
all the closed doors that were there. And we were literally there just kind of wringing our hands saying, God, we, we have no other option. What are we supposed to do right now? And it was in that moment that we, we decided to reach out and make one last call to the realtor to see if there was anything on the horizon. And lo and behold, we called the, the realtor and he said, you know, I found a property that might be interesting to you. And so later that afternoon, we went and looked at a property and that led us to miracle number three. And that was God's provision of a perfect space for Mission Church. God's provision of a space that was far beyond what we could ever even think about. In fact, when I and the staff had envisioned the, the ultimate next step place for Mission Church, it was always in the Target Shopping Center because that was right around the corner from where we met at Copper Trails. There were empty spaces there. We felt that would be the ultimate location. But when we came to the, the new building that God had, had provided for us, when we first saw it, we looked at one another and we said, this is better than the Copper Trails shopping center with Super Target. There are more people, more businesses, more apartment complexes, more growth, more opportunities, more strategic of a location. And we could not even begin to imagine it. It was better than what we had even thought about or imagined. And it reminded me of Ephesians chapter three, where Paul writes this. He says, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever Amen. Paul says God is able to do more than we even think or imagine. And when we first looked at this space, we knew, we knew this was better than what we could have even imagined. God closed the door at the school we were looking at, which would have been a temporary space because he knew he had something more permanent for Mission Church, a better place for us in store. Now, we had found the perfect place. The question was, could we get it? Could we as a church find a way to move into a space, even in the middle of COVID. And that led to miracle number four. Miracle number four is Desert Springs Community Church. As you know, they were our sister church who helped us to plant four and a half, five years ago that, that gave us resources and sent people with us and have been a blessing and encouragement all the way through our journey. And here's the reality, church. When we looked at our financial situation coming out of COVID, when we looked at how much money we had in the bank, when we talked to the shopping center here about leasing space from them, there was no way they were gonna sign a contract with Mission Church. We didn't have money in the bank. Our giving was down. We didn't have the resources to make this happen on our own. There was no way that we were going to be able to have this space without help. And that's when our elders from Mission met with the elders from Desert Springs and they began to talk and say, what can we do to support you and how can we come alongside? And Desert Springs offered to come alongside and co-sign the lease with us as a guarantor so that the shopping center would be open to Mission Church moving into this space. The Desert Springs leadership team and elders agreed to not only sign the lease space for us, but also to come alongside of us financially as we move into this new space and help us with some of the added responsibilities of rent and, and paying for the, the fees to be in a shopping center and the increased cost of utilities. And that was such a blessing that God provided through Desert Springs. Now here's the fifth miracle. We were able to sign a lease in less than two weeks on this building space. God provided and God moved so many things around so that we could have this space. God helped us to negotiate a great rate through our real estate agent. God provided uh, money in, as part of the lease for our tenant improvements as, as our build out costs. And I found this out after we had signed the lease, but literally there was another group that was prepared to rent a couple of the spaces here. It would have, it would have taken it right out from under us and we had no idea Literally, we signed the lease within a few hours of them coming in with their offer to sign the lease as well. God protected us. Even though this building has sat vacant for years, we were able to get the lease signed and God worked an amazing miracle. Now here's, here's the next miracle, miracle number six. This is so exciting because I had been praying for months that God would open a door for us to be able to regather again on Sundays. 
We had been meeting on Saturday nights and that was difficult and we knew that it would be better for us moving forward with momentum if we could get back to Sunday mornings. And we were able to sit down with the leadership at Epicentro Church and and negotiate with them and and work out a plan for us to have a service on Sunday mornings again and and just regather. And that was such a big blessing. And God provided through Epicentro an option for us to continue meeting on Sunday mornings during the season that we need to build out our new building. God was amazing in providing an opportunity for us to regather for Sunday worship. Miracle number seven is this. I just called it big little things. God just was in all the details. God was doing things that I couldn't have even asked him for, that I couldn't even imagine. I, I mean, God provided us a connection with the great architect who was able and willing to start right away with writing plans, who, who had a ministry background and understood churches. God provided a, a general contractor with great connections And here's the thing, the first meeting I had with the general contractor, he came in and said, you know, I have a lot of carpeting left over from a previous job and I'm willing to donate it to Mission Church and carpet your entire building for free. I don't know if you understand the significance of that, but that's huge money we're talking about that we're able to save literally thousands of dollars because of the generosity and because of God putting these people in place I'm talking to our architect and I get a phone call. I get a call from a friend of mine. He works for an engineering firm. He called me and he said, "Uh, Kyle, I want you to know that I I talked to the owners of our engineering firm and they want to donate the cost of drawing out the plans for all the the plumbing and the mechanical and and, and the electrical and all the systems in your building. They're going to donate that for free. It's over $10,000 worth of work that their company is willing to donate for us for free. God is providing already in all the little things, all the details. I spoke with one of the sign companies about signage on the building. And right away they said, I don't know what it is, but I just feel something inside that I want to help you. And I want to give you a discount. And I'm, I'm just feeling led to do something really to, to make this work for you and, and to really help you out at, at, a, at a significant discount from our normal cost. God has already been in all the little details along the way. God has been lining this up and there is no doubt in my mind that every single step of this process, God has been at work doing things. And and here's the last miracle I want to share with you. Miracle number eight. This is probably the biggest one. Miracle number eight is West Point Baptist Church. Now here's what's taken place and that many of you aren't aware about. God has brought it about through a a series of events that another church has approached us about the possibility of merging our two congregations together. The goal is that as two churches together, we could be stronger than ever, that we could have more resources and more opportunities and more people working together for the mission of reaching our city for Jesus Christ And I want to tell you, church, this has been so humbling to have another church come and say, we would like to come under your leadership and follow what God has been leading you to do in this community and be a part of Mission Church and join with you in in our people, in our staff, in our resources to help further the mission and ministry of Mission Church. And so I want to encourage you, church, to be praying Their church at West Point Baptist are still praying about this. We're praying about this. We're having meetings every week, our leadership team and their leaders, and we're trusting God leading us through this process. And I want to ask you right now to pray, to pray that God's will would be done and that God would be at work bringing two sister churches together, two church plants that have struggled in 2020, that that together we could be stronger than ever to be able to move forward in reaching our community for Jesus Christ. We believe that God is up to something huge. And I want to tell you that in the days to come, we're going to be giving more details about the merger and what that looks like and the timelines and all the pieces of that. But for now, I want you to be praying because I believe it's a God thing to think about the idea that coming out of COVID, we could merge with another church and literally have more people, more resources in the bank, more volunteers serving and and more momentum than we ever had, plus moving into a building out of COVID. Only God could do that. That's huge. Only God could do these kind of things, church. 
This is who God is. And when I think about our church, one of the verses that God gave me from very beginning of building Mission Church was this verse from Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. God has been doing a significant work. God has been building, and even during the midst of the most difficult year of all, God has been working miracles on our behalf to bring us to this moment. And I want you to see this church because this is our story. And I believe that God's given us a vision to reach our community. There are so many hurting people, so many people who are apart from the gospel. And God is calling us to be that transformation in our city, to bring that about in one of the fastest growing communities in America, where more than 85 to 90% of the people are not churched and not reached with the gospel. I believe that God has placed us here for such a time as this. And I want to challenge you, church. We're not going to get there on our own. We need you. We need you to step up because if we're going to fulfill the vision that God's given us in our community to see people transformed by the gospel, to see our community changed because of the power of Christ, it's going to take all of us working together. And so I want to challenge you as we close with three ways that you can be part of what God is doing right now. Number one is I want to challenge you to serve. We need every one of us serving and being part of a volunteer team, part of making an impact, part of helping, uh, whether it's online or in person, but welcoming people from our community and, and connecting and serving them, loving them. We need everyone to play their part. Number two is this. I want to challenge you. Who are you inviting? We had a message last week where we talked about God has still called us as a church to live on mission, to be reaching people with the gospel. And it starts with our circle. It starts with the one person who's our neighbor, our friend, our coworker. It starts with that group that we're praying for, that we're being intentional with to reach out. If you missed that message, I want to encourage you to go back and look at that. But we need to be intentional about inviting people in to what God is doing here in Goodyear through Mission Church. And finally, I want to encourage you, we need you to give. We need you to be a part of this financially in order to help us take the next steps forward. And there are three big financial needs that we're going to have here as a church. Number one is the cost of building out this building. As you can tell, this is an empty warehouse with a lot of open space. And we're coming to, to put in walls and ceilings and restrooms and all of the things that we're going to need to make this space fit for ministry. And the build out cost is going to be significant. It's probably going to be more than $500,000 is what we're estimating right now. Now, the good news is we have some money from tenant improvements that the lease has agreed. The owners have given us toward that, but we're going to be significantly short of those funds and we need you to help. Number two is we need to put furnishings in this space. We're going to need sound equipment and projection screens, and we're going to need chairs and children's ministry equipment and all kinds of things to make this building uh, work for ministry. And there's going to be a cost to furnish this building and make it ready for use. And finally, number three is this. We're taking a huge step forward. At Copper Trails, we were paying $2,400 a month to rent that space. And we had a very low cost of rent and, and the cost of using that space. At Epicentro, we've been paying almost double that to be able to use the space and have access to their building. But when we move into this space, we're going to, again, double that amount where we have rent of almost $10,000 a month. And, and we're going to have the, the triple net expenses of being in the shopping center. We're going to have utilities costs. We're going to have all of those added costs that we haven't been paying before. And we believe that God's going to, to raise up our church for this time to be able to minister in our community. And so we're encouraging you to give to help us with the build out costs, to give to help us with the cost of furnishing the building, and finally to give to help us with the cost of our ongoing expenses month to month to rent and lease a space like this that God has provided. Church, I want to challenge you that in my heart, I've been praying the last few weeks about what God would have us to do, about a goal that God would give us to shoot for over the next four months between February and May, that as a church, we could come together. And God keeps laying on my heart that we need to raise $100,000 to be part of moving this mission forward to reach our community for Christ. We need to come together, church, 
to make this happen. And we need to step out and be bold in faith to trust that God is at work, that he's doing a big work in our community. And church, I want you to be a part of it. This is not just Mission Church's story. This is your story. You are a part of this ministry. You are a part of what God is building. And it takes all of us. Now you might be saying, pastor, that's a huge amount of money. And I believe you're right. It's a massive amount of money and it's a lot of money for us to gather. But as a church, if we come together, as a church, if collectively we all sacrifice, and maybe it, maybe it means a couple times a week I'm, I'm willing to make my coffee at home and, and forgo the, the cost of a latte at the coffee shop and put that money toward the building. Maybe it means that, that, that I cancel one of my you know, online subscriptions and put that money toward the cost of the building. Maybe it means that, that I take some of the money uh, from my tax return or my stimulus money or something and put it toward the cost of what God is doing in our community. But I believe, church, that if we step up and we step out and we continue to build, God is building something great. And so I want to encourage you, church, now is the time to rise up and to build and to see what God will do if we as a church come together to reach our community for Christ. Church, we are so excited to celebrate our five-year anniversary. We're so excited about what God is doing here in our community. And we look forward with great expectation to what God has for the rest of this year and moving forward because we truly believe the best is yet to come. Church, thank you for watching this please reach out to me or one of our staff team or elders. If you have questions or comments or concerns, I'm gonna close us in a word of prayer. Thank you again for being part of our service today. God, thank you for everything you've been doing these last four years. Thank you for all eight of these significant miracles where God, we can literally see your hand at work in the midst of hopeless situations. God, thank you that you are not done with Mission Church, that you are just getting started. Thank you that the next five years are gonna be bigger and greater and better than ever before. Thank you, God, that you are positioning us in a place in this community where we will be strategically located to reach so many families with the hope and the life-changing message of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray right now that you would challenge us as a people to rise up, to be the church in this moment, to be the church to lead out in our community and to reach people for Christ. So Lord, I pray you would challenge us to be part of this, to be all in for what you're doing, to serve with all our hearts and, and to invite people into the ministry and what you're doing here. And God, to, to give sacrificially so that we can be part of rising up out of this difficult season of COVID and building forward for the next five, 10, 50 years, God, of what you wanna do in this city through your power and through your might. So God, we give you all the praise, all the glory for everything that you've done. And we look forward with great expectation for what's to come. And we pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. Church, thank you again for watching. Have an amazing week and remember you are loved.